Well, hello. It's Saturday afternoon. <laughs> it is extremely sunny out here, but I'm loving the glow that it's giving. So we're going to sit outside today and absorb some vitamin D. But yeah, so today I am just going to do a knit and chat type of video. I have not done a getting to know me or anything like that in probably a year. Um, I think I did one, one, maybe my third or fourth video in last year. So instead of you having to go all the way back and try to find it, we could just do one now. And honestly, things have changed in the past year. So maybe some of my ideas, opinions or whatever have morphed into something new. So let's talk about it. So yeah, grab your project. I was originally gonna work on my um, cable crush hoodie that I'm making for my daughter. I'll show it to you, but I'm definitely not gonna work on it because it is wool and the sun is hot. But this is what it's looking like. I can't see if you can see it because I am in the sun, but the section that I'm on is the hood. And I ended up taking this hood out because I couldn't remember I picked it up originally I messed up somehow and my count was off and I couldn't remember where I was and I couldn't figure out what I was doing to fix what I did wrong so I just ripped the whole hood out and I restarted it and now we're back on track so right now I'm on the stockinette portion which would just be knitting one way and purling the other way but it's hot and I'm not putting nothing on my lap so I opted to pull out this project instead which is that first sweater also known as what will be my t-shirt because I shortened the sleeves and um, the body is coming along perfectly the sleeves are done I can't wait to do a try on for you I love the color against my skin it fits really well this fiber is like um, the perfect summer fiber is a uh, bamboo and cotton I believe Did I, I always confuse this with the other one yeah this is 60% bamboo and 40% cotton and it's like the perfect summer yarn for me it's very drapey very airy and I think it comes in some really nice pastel -y type colors a couple of pop colors like this one is a pop color um, it, this is called coral on their website but if you ask me it looks more like a watermelon slushy like when you blend up a watermelon that's what this kind of gives me more than it does coral but whatever perception perception so yeah so let's go ahead and start with the bare basics bare basics my name is Tiffany <laughs> the channel is beyond swatches I had that name in a dream one day um i was talking about it well i was talking about it with my best friend which we talk about everything but i was really sitting up and thinking about it during 2020 or it was the end of 2019 that i really thought about it and by the end of 2020 i just went ahead and registered the business name um and beyond swatches is really just my evolution if you want to call it that from making little simple squares and half finished scarves essentially swatches and going beyond that and making sweaters and shirts and shorts I made a pair of shorts but I ended up ripping them out because I really didn't like the way they fit um, and and just homeware and you know home goods and things so that's where the channel name came from it was more or less a reminder to go beyond the basics of just knit and purl and really really learning to appreciate this craft called knitting you know you can do so much with it <laughs> like you can really make a whole outfit i've seen pants shorts and depending on your fiber you can do like a pajama dress i've seen curtains even though crochet would probably be better um just all kinds of things you know so definitely something that I'm really passionate about as far as learning and growing past what is considered basic but also really appreciating that basic has its place so that's what that channel name came where that channel name came from and um, what's next I guess after the bare basics of that I am 
let me think about it. I just turned 48 years old. So I am 48. I am married. I have three children, three daughters more specifically. So yes, send, send all your good well wishes because having three daughters is, it's a joy. <laughs> But my God, if it's not an emotional roller coaster. <laughs> so we got the three girls. Um, the most recent thing that happened in life, we bought this house that I'm in now last year in June. So that was my first home purchase. Did not ever consider that this would be a real opportunity for me because I've always been in debt for as long as I can remember. And, you know, things just work themselves out to be the way that they are and it finally came to fruition. So I have a home now in the middle of the country, child. <laughs> there are cows, donkeys, uh, chickens. There's owls out here at night. There's possum walking around. I hit one of those for the first time in my life. Um, all kinds of random things in the road. Um, but I love my little country life. I'm a city girl at heart. I am born and raised in New York from the Bronx. Um, but we migrated this way 15 years ago, I believe. When I say the numbers, it sounds unreal. <laughs> that 15 years ago, I left home and came to North Carolina. I had no family here. I mean, I have family here, but... We were not close. That was more my grandparents, my mother's mother and her husband, which would be my mother's stepfather. But we didn't have a close relationship. So I was literally down here on faith. <laughs> and needless to say, it always works out when you ride on faith. So we have no regrets. Um, I met my husband here in 20... Uh, 15 we were married in 2017 and yeah and as they say the rest is history so that's enough about the family life you'll always hear a little antidote or two when it comes to the family because they are a major part of my life um, they're always in the background they always make an appearance even when I tell them that I am recording they inevitably show up I have two cats one is Sylvia everyone knows her she is a personality of her own she runs the roost and then we just picked up a stray that was uh, found by a friend and her name is Simone she is a gray fluffy ball of energy she is I think she's four months now or three months now it's been a long time since I've had a kitten around and she de definitely brings kitten energy so <laughs> Um, they're getting along they still fight and wrestle as I guess cats do but um, she's part of the family now she's a little munchkin so that is that on the home life front um, no it's not I work full-time I work from home for an insurance company and I conduct telephone interviews with all kinds of people um, for life insurance and so it's interesting the amount of talking that has to be done and then I decided that YouTube videos is what I wanted to do because <laughs> sometimes I don't record because I just don't feel like yapping you know but I miss you guys I really do enjoy making these videos um, I do struggle a little bit when it comes to figuring out what to post and things because um, I always say it in pretty much every video. I really am just documenting my knitting journey and kind of sharing the things that I make. And so sometimes there's nothing too exciting to share, but if you don't, then you get lost in the algorithm world. So I'm trying not to get lost, but I'm also not trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak, because it's hard out there. Um, but yeah, I think that's it as far as home life. I think we're good on that, so. Anyway, if you got questions about it, just let me know. I'll answer the questions. Um, knitting world related. So I started knitting in 2002, 
when I was pregnant with my middle child. I was on a modified bed rest at the time. I think they told me that she was kind of heavy. And she was. So she was tearing my whole insides out. She was so heavy. But I ended up having to like sit down for more hours in a day. And I was bored. So I picked up a knitting book. Yes, an old-fashioned booklet that had the um, knitting needles. I think they came with a size 8 and a size 10 in their metal. You know what I'm talking about. You've probably seen them before. And it had like all of the little accessories included it had a booklet um, it taught you a scarf pattern a hat pattern um, and I think I made the scarf out of one of them but quite honestly I don't remember because I'm pretty sure I didn't keep it um, back then way back then like at this point we're saying what 20 something years ago um, 20 yeah 21 years ago my available my ability to get certain yarns was very limited to what I could find in I'm thinking places like okay if you're from New York you'll understand but I want to say I might have went to a place like Conway that was a I used to love shopping at Conway anyway it was like a little discount everything store um, but I think I got yarn from like Conway, maybe Woolworth, maybe, I don't know where I was getting yarn from because it wasn't like there were yarn shops, you know, but there must have been places where I could pick up a ball of something and it more than likely was always Red Heart yarn because that's all that I remember back then, Red Heart Super Saver. <laughs> And Red Heart Super Saver is like the workhorse of the workhorse yarns. I love me some Red Heart Super Saver and they've come a long way. Like they don't just have the typical Super Saver with all of the colors. They also have now like ombre colors. They have some soft fluffy ones, striping ones, you know. So yarn has come a long way in the short 20 years that I've been messing around with it so I'm it's pretty exciting I'm not gonna lie and now I have a, a cabinet and a closet and two bins full of wool and nylon and cotton and it's just amazing how wide and expansive this industry actually is you know never mind the tools and the notions and the patterns oh my god <laughs> But anyway, I started knitting back then. Um, interestingly enough, my mom was a crocheter and I learned to crochet. I don't know if I if she taught me how to crochet or if I just learned from watching her and reading her little pamphlets. Um, definitely aging myself. Back then, there was a company called Time Life and Time Life used to send her crochet patterns in a book and you would put them in like a loose leaf book you know with the little three ring binder type books and she had these patterns by categories man I've, it's like they really need to come out with something like that again but I guess essentially that's the same as like um, let's say a yarn company having their patterns online on different websites and stuff so it's the same thing you can print them off and save them but I just always thought that was so ingenious and every time somebody had a baby she would crochet like a little bunting outfit or a hat and glove set you know little mittens and booties and stuff I just thought that was so cool but then I discovered knitting and I wanted to learn how to knit so I ended up with that booklet I don't remember for the life of me how I got a hold of that book I don't know if somebody gave it to me did I buy it I do not remember but I got it and I got some yarn and I taught myself from reading these little illustrations and an arrow would be going that way and then when you would do the stitch like you're looking at it and you're like this doesn't make any sense so you would try it again eventually it clicked and I made a scarf <laughs> and um, I honestly wish that I would have kept whatever that first project was those first few projects just to see the growth but there was no such thing as social media back then. There was barely a, such a thing as cameras, you know, like cameras were cameras. You had, it was an occasion. You had to pull it out and get the little flash on and everything else. Shortly after, I want to say disposable cameras became a thing. 
but loading that film and all that do you ever remember that 35 millimeter camera cameras and you had to put the little film in and wind it and <laughs> I feel so old <laughs> but anyway those those were the conditions in which I learned how to knit <laughs> um, and then we can kind of fast forward through the years so there wasn't a whole lot of um, at the time I was still a plus size person according to standards back then so there wasn't a whole lot of clothing options there was tons of scarves tons of shawls I think I do remember people making socks and slippers and pillow cushions and things like that um, knitting wise um, they had booklets in the store that they used to sell um, and I bought all of those things off and on throughout the years but because I was taught on my own I was a little limited when I would run into a problem. There wasn't a local yarn shop nearby. It wasn't anyone I could go to to say, hey, I'm having problems with this. Can you help me? YouTube was not around. <laughs> I think the internet was just starting to become a thing back then. Let me think about this. So it was 1995 when I had my oldest and I had a computer in 97 or eight. I started knitting in 2000. I still had a computer then, I think. But the internet just wasn't what it is right now. Like, it's... Do y'all remember Ask Jeeves? <laughs> Me and Jeeves, we were cool. <laughs> Ask Jeeves. There wasn't, there wasn't a Pinterest. <laughs> there wasn't a Ravelry yet, you know? There was uh, patterns on ball bands of yarn. There were pattern books in the store but there wasn't fashion yet that I recall anyway. Um, but then fast forwarding all these years later and we finally get into the Ravelry of the world, the local yarn shops of the world. I was down here at one point, I remember I picked up knitting again and there was a local yarn store near me, the most kindest owners ever. They ended up selling the shop, but they were really, really nice. And I would go in there and look at the yarn and I was like this is so pretty but I don't know what to make and it was then that I realized you know they make all of these shirts and sweaters but they were not sized to fit me and there began the disappointment in knitting because I felt like man I'll never be able to make these cutesy things that are in the book you know or online but then somewhere a movement happened and size inclusivity became a thing and and now we have plus size patterns or patterns that are sized up to like a 50 inch bust and at the time I probably was like a 46 or 44 right now I'm sitting at a 48 which now we are able to find patterns that fit well we're able to find patterns that are sized for a larger range of sizes and larger range not just on the plus side but also on the smaller side because of course it was small medium large but then that kind of left out the extra smalls and the extra extra smalls as well as the two three four five xls you know so inclusivity doesn't just go in one direction so i'm pretty proud of how the industry has navigated the, the supply and demand of it all you know um, so yeah, so now I have a Ravelry library, which I was looking through the other day and I think I said I was going to put a video together, but again, I yap all day long at work. I just have not felt like doing it, but I do want to show it because I have a lot of patterns from when I first started with Ravelry and there were a lot of, um, hats and triangular shawls, um, baby things. I didn't have no kids and I had no I wasn't trying to have no kids but they were small so I felt like they were easy to make but then I made something I was like I don't like baby items they're just too fiddly there's they go fast but you got to do too much maneuvering I, it's just not my thing but I have all these patterns that I downloaded and saved and majority of them I never made some of them I started making but they just Yarn choice will ruin a project, y'all. <laughs> Tell me if you agree. I think you will. 
sometimes you can pick the wrong yarn for the best project um, best pattern and end up with a misshapen hat that is just floppy or too tight or unstretchy or anything like that so so that is uh i guess the the nice long version of my knitting and how i got to where i am um now we'll just kind of talk about how i ended up in this youtube world because <laughs> chat <laughs> i've never been uncomfortable talking to a group of people um but what I found with knitting specifically, I loved it and I had nobody to talk to. <laughs> none of my friends knit. And when I say none of my friends, I'm probably overstretching in that uh, statement because I really only have like one or two friends. So <laughs> they didn't knit um, at the time. My mom didn't knit. And sometimes people don't understand your passion or your obsession. So you don't mind doing something all day long and they're like we still talking about this can we talk about something else and i'm like no i want to talk about yarn <laughs> so they wouldn't get it you know but in 2019 we were all heading into that lockdown period i guess and there was a lot of um boredom you know and i really picked up the knitting then and right when they were about to lock us in I went to the yarn shop and I said I'm gonna buy some yarn and I'm gonna work on a sweater and a blanket and that's gonna be my COVID project I was under the impression that we'd be out of COVID within that first year <laughs> little did I know that here we are what four years later and we're still dealing with COVID and its variants but that's neither here nor there all of that to say I discovered yarn and then online yarn and different yarn shops and shipping and overseas and oh my god the, <laughs> the opportunity for yarn was endless um, I was very much a person who shopped for yarn on price I didn't understand quality and I understood that quality cost. And so I just avoided quality because I could not afford. And even now, I can't afford $27 for one skein of yarn that has like 180 yards. Like what? <laughs> I had developing this bad habit of that whole FOMO. Like you watch people on YouTube or online and they have this yarn cabinet and it's full to the brim and I wanted a yarn stash too and I was like I want to get all of the things so I started buying things but then six months later I'd look at the things and I'm like I don't even like this color I don't like this fabric that it's creating and I'd end up donating a lot of it to Goodwill and then somewhere in 2020 I decided I like yarn so much and I like knitting so much that I want to open an online yarn shop so that I can buy all of the good yarn but because it's a thrill for shopping like I ain't gonna lie there's some endorphins that kick in when it comes to shopping and you just like Ooh, I want to buy this you know but then you don't really want it so that's where having a shop was like gonna be the perfect blend you know that did not work out um i am a person who at the time lived in a two-story townhouse i didn't have enough space to fuel a yarn shop like i had no way to put all this stuff so moving forward a couple of years i just canceled my um i didn't cancel my business name but i canceled like the tax portion of it um, because I just I wasn't going to be able to do what I wanted to do and quite honestly as I started navigating the business plan that they make you put out or make you try to put together I realized what I wanted was not necessarily a store but I wanted an experience I wanted to have um, put together like knitting kits and sell those with classes so I always had a love for teaching knitting and I always had a love for teaching people who have never knit before because they're the most fun <laughs> and I 
managed to teach a few people and I'm surprised that it worked you know I hadn't didn't take class I was just doing me <laughs> and they wanted to learn and they did and it, it was really encouraging for me it kind of boosted my self-confidence a little bit to know that yeah you can do this and so I did but then I then had this house full of yarn from a shop that I now closed and some of it, if not most of it, is not my forte. It wasn't something that I wanted or that I would like, but I was stuck with it now because I purchased it. So I was trying to navigate through some of the stash and I realized a lot of it wasn't gonna work. I put a post up on Instagram trying to get rid of it. Like I wasn't even trying to sell all of it. I was just, do you need yarn? I will give it to you and for whatever reason Instagram's algorithm just wasn't working for me and it just didn't work so I ended up donating a lot of it I took it to Goodwill I still have a lot of yarn but most of it I'm okay with you know I have some fuzzy like mohair -y type yarn that I probably will never use but I didn't toss it because it's still usable and I could see me using it as a as a gift yarn like I could make a hat with some fuzz to it you know people like that kind of stuff so I kept some of it but for the most part I spent so much money funding this store or like trying to stock this store only for me to end up not even doing anything with it and then to find out like I couldn't even give the stuff away not because I didn't physically show it to people but like the internet was just acting funky at the time so I just had a lot of stuff, had to get rid of it, <clears throat> and I was tired of looking at it. And I wanted to make space for things that I wanted, that I that I craved for myself, you know? And I didn't want to feel obligated to just work with things that I didn't care for just because it was here. Like, nah, we're not doing that. So that's how we got to YouTube. <laughs> YouTube, I said, you know what? I'm going to, everybody says that they like the way that um like if they have to be taught a skill or something like that that I, that they understand the way that i speak to them and all of that stuff so i was like well i'll just do some tutorials the problem with tutorials y'all you got to do the work too like i need to make the project film the project i'll never finish this project so i did a couple of tutorials and i still kind of throw them up when i'm working on something that i feel like maybe you'll want to know how to fix a drop stitch without a cable needle, or without a, a crochet hook. Um, how I do continental knitting and purling. Um, I think I did one for the cast on for the ranunculus. That one's been pretty popular lately, um, which had me thinking that maybe I should do the ranunculus knit along because all of a sudden that video got a lot of traction. So that's how we ended up there. But um, yes, yeah, so I started with that. And then one day I was like, you know what? just do a video just say hi to people you'll never know what could happen and at last check 972 people later I have a nice little circle of friends that I am absolutely uh, enjoying I love this I really do um, I do worry sometimes about am I ever gonna run out of things to talk about I don't think so because there's always something to make but we also develop new interests and maybe this is not your thing after a while, you know what I mean? So eh, how relevant can you be forever, you know? I am trying to get to that glorious monetization stage, but I'm nowhere near it. <laughs> so it is what it is. I got my, I have to get to 4,000 watch hours, I think is what they say. And, and when I look at that stuff, it feels a little defeating, but I still do, do the work, do the videos because I like to do them. So I'm not really overwhelmed by the lack of progress in that sense because I try not to think about it. I mean, you think about it, but you try not to dwell on it, you know? So I think that's the long and short of my knitting journey, where I started, how I started, where I'm at, why I'm here. We did the channel name. What else? I can't think of anything else. So I can give you some fun facts. I guess we can go through those. If you haven't guessed, my favorite color is pink to knit with. My favorite color to wear is pink and or blue. 
Uh, cream is slowly becoming another color that I'm loving. I like the way it looks on me. I just used to always, I lived in New York again, so it was always dirty. <laughs> and you could very rarely ever come home without a spot or a smidge or a smudge on the bottom of your pants or something. So I always avoided white and cream colors, but now that I'm out here in the grand old south with nothing but grass and I stay in my car all the time, it's not a bad idea. I like some cream and white. So those are my favorite colors. My favorite project to knit um, would probably be a hat, but I have not even worked on a hat this year, primarily because I really wanted to focus on summer knitting. So I finished the tank top and I finished this. I finished a couple of tank tops and I'm working on this. So I was really focused on summer knits this year. Um, but hats are always very easy and quick. Um, the muscle borrow hat, a lot of people are making that and I guess in theory it's a good knit but I just like a basic cast on this amount of stitches and decrease this amount of stitches, close it up at the top and you're done. Like the whole figure out your gauge thing while you go, I guess it's okay but I don't want to do any thinking if I want to throw a project in the car, you know? Um, I still will always say I prefer to crochet a blanket before I knit one, even though I am making a blanket. Let me not say I'm making it because then my daughter will complain. But I'm trying to piece together a hexagon blanket. It's a tin can knit blanket um, for my daughter and my son-in-law in their favorite colors. But it requires that I use a size 7 needle like in the round and then you should uh, put them on DPNs and all of that is fine except I can't always get to the DPN so it ends up sitting for a while. Um, it's also not a thinking project but it's a pay attention project a little bit when you get to the closure. So I haven't really been working on her blanket as much as I would like to but I do it in waves like I'll finish like four little hexagons and then I'll put it down for a little while work on a sweater you know but um so yeah definitely would prefer to crochet a blanket than knit one but they are coming out with some pretty decent knit patterns for blankets that are in pieces and sections and that makes it seem a little bit easier to navigate so yeah um my favorite thing that I have made so far, even though I ruined it by it getting felted by my family by mistake, was my black ranunculus. It was made out of this good wool yarn by Pearl Soho. It was my favorite knit. It was black. It looked like spiderweb. It was so pretty. And I want to make another one. I do. But I won't cast it on for this upcoming uh, ranunculus cowl because it's in black and I feel like you can't demonstrate anything on black without it being hard to see and so I will probably cast one on in this same bamboo yarn in a light blue color or something um, just for demonstration purposes but maybe I'll cast on the black one for myself for actual wear I haven't figured it out yet um, where is my favorite place to buy yarn from? I think I have a couple of places that I would recommend. I always go to Premier first because Premier Yarns has sales. <laughs> they have bag deals like where you get three or four in a bag for this amount of money. Like I like that. that. Um, Premier also has... 100% wool they have mixed blends they have acrylic they have but they have a good quality acrylic you know so I like premiere um, lion brand is another one they have kits and kits are great you get the yarn you just pick your color the pattern comes with it you everything is there in one little nice little bag um, Pearl Soho is good. They're a little pricey compared to the other brands that I just mentioned, but the quality is great and they have sales often. Um, usually it's like a 20 or 25% off. I know what you should save somewhere is that for Black Friday, 
I think they do a 40% off or 30% off. And that's how I got in trouble last year because I bought so much linen quill and so much good wool because of that stupid sale. <laughs> and I still have skeins of yarn in the cabinet that I have not touched, but it's in there for when I'm ready. And as soon as it cools off a little bit on a regular, I probably will cast some stuff on with those yarns. I really like them. Um, Hobie is another good one. Hobie has some really good quality yarns. They have good sales too, but they, their quality is really good. Their customer service is fantastic. Their shipping was a little high, but I very rarely ever paid for shipping because if you buy $75 or more, it's free. And if I'm gonna buy something from Denmark, I'm gonna just pay $100 for the yarn and get it for free. It's, I mean, it's Denmark, <laughs> so. Knit Picks is another one. They're always really good. Um, one of my favorite yarns from Knit Picks is Palette. Palette yarn is 100% Peruvian wool, I think it is. And I made my half and half wrap out of it. I cast it on a hat out of it. It's really good. It softens up pretty well when you um, kind of block it, soak it. I did that a couple of times and it's now not 100% soft, but it's not scratchy wool anymore. Um, so that would always be a good recommendation and they have tons of colors, tons of colors in that palette yarn. Um, every once in a while, like for Black Friday, I think they had a $2 sale, two, three and $4 sale. So again, lost my ever loving mind, but <laughs> Knit Picks is good. Um, I want to say that might be it. I never shopped with like Hirschner's or Mary Maxim or anything because the majority of what they have is like acrylic yarns and I'm not opposed to acrylic but I can get acrylic from Walmart and Hobby Lobby or something so I have no need to try to order it online. If I'm buying online it's because I want something of a quality I have not seen in the store. Um, I want to say Walmart, of course, you can always go to Walmart. I would not buy their yarn online. I feel like their pricing is a little bit weird, but Amazon is a place you can go and get some yarn from. But again, a little bit weird on the pricing. Better to just wait for a sale from the person. Unless you got Prime, then you can avoid the shipping that you might have to pay for one or two balls of yarn. <laughs> I'm all about free shipping. I hate paying shipping. Um, but yeah, I think that's it. So favorite set of needles definitely my mindful set by knitters pride i have learned that i prefer a metal needle more than i prefer a wooden one however if i had to choose a wooden needle it would also be a knitters pride set it's called symphony it has a nice sleekness to the wood um, so it's not like a bamboo where it's just raw it has like a a waxy something coating on it and it's pretty nice so that slippery yarns like this as a beginner you would want something that has a little bit of grip so it's not sliding off the needle so fast so um, that would be a good recommendation I am on the hunt for some Chiago needles I really like Chiago needles but I have so many Knitter's Pride tips that it just makes no sense the problem I have with Knitter's Pride is their cords their cords are really not that great um, and I'm also really heavy handed. I've broken more cords than I can count <laughs> because I do a lot of pulling and tugging and I'm just heavy handed. So, you know, so maybe it's me, maybe it's not a defect on the product, but I definitely am a little heavy handed. So, um, favorite designer, if you don't know already, is Knititude. I like her simple, um, easy to knit type of writing style um, I made from her quite a few things I got a couple of sweaters that I did I'm redoing them now I made a dress from her I did a couple of her tank tops just recently those confidence crop tops I got those um, that I finished and I will be making a mo uh, more of them because they're good layering pieces I like it and it's a good stash buster if you have some yarn you got to get rid of um, another designer that I really like is Jessie Maid. Um, she has a lot of info in her patterns and makes it to where you can kind of navigate it as a beginner. Um, that's really important to me. I want a pattern to instruct me 
not necessarily baby me but I don't want you to just let me go as if I've already done this before because maybe I don't know you know there's other pattern designers I'm sure that I have made that I love Katoba Kika is slowly becoming one of my favorites she has a lot of bobbles on her stuff though and I don't really care for bobbles but I do like the other stuff that she got going on I wanted to get my hands on her book um, one for support of her but I think I would really like to have the book. Um, I think that would be really nice. I think that's it knitting wise. I don't know what else you would wanna know, but that's what that's what I got to tell. <laughs> Favorite food, nachos and hot wings. I think they're awesome. Favorite cuisine of food is a tie, probably between uh, like, I was gonna say Mexican, but it's not Mexican. It's like all Latin dishes and all African and Jamaican dishes the flavors are just yeah <laughs> like I love those I'm not a big alcohol drinker but I do love a nice pink Moscato that's always nice um, yeah I love to cook for my family I love to try new recipes they're not as adventurous as the as I would like them to be but one of my kids is one of them she'll eat anything she's about that bougie life so when I want to make something with sprigs of parsley sticking off the end of it and flambe it she's like yeah let's do it <laughs> the other two not so much um i'm a horrible baker i can bake following a box pattern or something i'm a box pattern a box recipe but i don't follow recipes well i'm really the dump as you go and feel your ancestors talking to you type of seasoner so i don't do a whole lot of measuring so baking has never been my forte um as a new homeowner, gardening was supposed to be my thing, but I have discovered I don't have the patience for gardening. Um, so my neighbor, I was talking with her yesterday, she was like, get some trees. Trees are fun. You put them in the ground once, you really don't have to deal with them again, and you get some produce. And I said, okay, trees it is. <laughs> so, so I'm going to go and try to find some trees um, in the next week or two because they're starting to come out into these different nurseries. So I'm going to find some trees. You got any recommendations? Let me know. And I think that's about it. I think I have talked long enough. I can't see how long this video is because the sun is glaring at the the sun. But I mean, the sun is glaring through the phone, so I can't really see. But I feel like I talk long enough. And my throat is dry and it's Saturday and I got stuff to do. So I just am about to make it to the end of this round. So thank you for knitting and chatting with me. If you have any questions about what I talked about, let me know. If you want to share any of your fun little stories and anecdotes, I'd love to hear them because how are we supposed to get to know each other if we don't know each other, you know? Um, but yeah, we will talk on the next video. Um, if you are wanting to join the Ranunculus Knit Along for beginners, the website still has spaces open. So click on it. It is gobeyondswatches.com. As soon as you get there, I think if you scroll down a little bit, there's a little... Um, it's a blurb about the knit along. You just press the RSVP, fill your name out, um, and then navigate your way back to join the group or become a member so that you can join the group. Um, and that way you can keep up with like the different posts that I'll put in there. That's the goal. Because again, I am not a website person. This is my very first time trying to build anything website related for the public. So we'll see. <laughs> And if all else fails, email me, <laughs> beyondswatches at outlook.com. You can always find me by email if you can't find me anywhere else. Um, and on Instagram, it is beyond underscore swatches, at beyond underscore swatches. So Instagram, Outlook, you'll always find me there. Um, but yeah, try the website, give me your feedback, let me know what's not working, what is working, and Hopefully you'll sign up and we can meet in person face to face on Zoom. And if not, I will see you in the comments and in the next video.